Okay. Um, um, uh, welcome to everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, today's uh, webinar series, uh, which is basically the 16th talk in this series. And to have we have uh, today we have an honor to have uh, Doctor Engineer Fazlullah Akhtar joining us. Uh, he's working as a senior researcher and postdoctoral fellow uh, at the Center for Development Research, University of Bonn, Germany. His PhD in engineering research was focused on water availability and demand analysis in the Kabul River Basin in Afghanistan. Dr. Akhtar is a hydro, hydro, hydrologist and has an extensive experience working in Anudaria, Indus, and Kabul River Basin. He's the author <clears throat> of several peer-reviewed prestigious publications, articles, and book chapters in the field of water management, remote sensing, and hydrological modeling. Dr. Akhtar has an extensive experience of working with UNFAO, uh, USAID, and some prestigious government entities, including the Ministry of Higher Education and the Office of the President of IER of Afghanistan, uh, at the Center of Development Research, University of Bonn, Germany. So Dr. Saab will be talking today about the evaluation of grace-derived groundwater storage changes in the in different agroecological zones of Indus Basin in Pakistan. Thanks, Dr. Saab, for joining us. And this is now over to you, please. Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Salaam Alaikum. I'm happy to uh, be in front of you today, and thanks for inviting me. Um, I would like to speak to you today um, about our uh, recent research uh, published in the Journal of Hydrology, Evaluation of grace Dried Groundwater Storage Changes in Different Agroecological Zones of the Indus Basin. Um, the uh, contents, which I will be covering in the next couple of minutes, is a brief introduction to the area um, that we have considered for this research. Um, study area, the, the methodological framework that we have been using for this research, uh, the uh, basic uh, information about the materials and methods that we have been using, uh, then comes to the results, and then we will conclude with a couple of slides. Um, <clears throat> before coming to the details of this, uh, sorry, uh, coming to the details of um, uh, my presentation, let me tell you that it's the outcome of uh, one of our recent papers, as I said earlier, uh, which was recently published at the Journal of Hydrology. This was an effort jointly made with um, International Water Management Institute in Lahore um, in uh, the Center for Development Research of the University of Bonn. Um, as you see here, the um, globally the rate of uh, groundwater depletion has been increased from 126 cubic kilometer per year to 283 cubic kilometer per year between 1960 and 2000 respectively. Although there are uh, various digits and figures um, afterwards, but there is no um, clear uh, measurement of these variations uh, in the past 22 years or 20 years. Um, um, as you see, the groundwater withdrawal globally, uh, it's been majorly used in, in uh, urban activities. The urban activities comprise about 50% of the water consumption, irrigation in is around uh, up to 20 percent so between 10 to 20 percent and then the commercial activities uh, uh, they use about 40 percent of the groundwater withdrawal and here we come to the Kabul river basin which is uh, experiencing ext um, extensive so sorry uh, can uh, um, rest participants oh. turn off their mics please Sorry, Raisa, carry on. No problem. No problem. Okay. Um, today, we are going to speak about the Kabul River Basin, which is part of the larger Indus River Basin. It experiences a uh, withdrawal of 100, 450 cubic uh, million cubic meter against a recharge of 300 million cubic meter, according to a research uh, carried out by all 2006. The, meanwhile, in Pakistan, uh, which is uh, sharing the same uh, inflow from Afghanistan, is experiencing a mean annual recharge of 83 cubic kilometer against a withdrawal of 55 uh, cubic kilometer. Although the situation is here a bit different because of different situations that we uh, are going to explain maybe um, in the next uh, minutes. Okay, um, coming, uh, telling you about the uh, the uh, the dynamics behind uh, the over. Um, 
use of the groundwater. As you see here in this graph, um, Afghanistan has been experiencing a tremendous increase in, in uh, um, population. In 2022, it's around, it's considered to be around 40 million or uh, between 35 to 40 million. Um, although there are no clear statistics, but this has been uh, the projected uh, number of um, population in Afghanistan. And uh, um, starting from 2012, it was considered to be 25 million. So the additional uh, number of people which you increase had been uh, due to the repatriation from the neighboring countries, the Afghans who have been living abroad, um, and also the local population rise um, that has been uh, um, experienced uh, in Afghanistan. The projections say, according to Statistics Times, that by 2055, um, the population of Afghanistan will be almost double, like 67 million. Uh, while having these statistics, if you look at Pakistan from to compared to 2012, uh, from 187 million, it has been increased to up to uh, around 228, 27 million. Um, the projection says that the population of Pakistan is going to rise up to 306 million uh, in the next uh, couple of years. Similarly, um, why do we carry out this study was based on those facts which we just mentioned a few minutes before. Um, uh, that's why we considered this uh, Kabul River Basin and in, in, in larger the Indus Basin uh, because of the uh, population pressure, because of the uh, climate change impacts, um, because of the dependency for irrigation and, and municipal as well as industrial water consumption. That has been the reason. And that's why we we, uh, we decided to consider the two areas. One of them is the upstream here in, in Afghanistan. It was the Kabul city, especially. So part of the Kabul level where the consumptive behaviors, behavior is uh, completely different than downstream here in Pakistan, um, which is the lower Bari Duab Canal area. If you look at these graphs um, up here, you see the reference of transpiration um, in the lower Bari Duab Canal is, is more than 1400 millimeter, while in Kabul, uh, it's around 1268 millimeter per year. Um, similarly, if you look at the precipitation, um, the lower Bari Duab Canal receives maximum precipitation in the month of, from the month of May onward. This is mostly the monsoon uh, region and, and, and the monsoon showers they are experiencing, while partial um, rainfall they experience also in February and March during spring season. Uh, similarly, in Kabul River Basin, if you see here, the precipitation in, in normally comes in the form of snowfall. Uh, so the, more than 80% of water in Afghanistan comes from the snow melt. The precipitation starts, the, or the snowfall starts from November in December onwards up to March and sometimes last to, uh, until April or end of April. Um, so the precipitation pattern is completely different. So there are so many um, uh, hydrological properties that do vary because of these uh, differences that do exist between the two dis uh, dif uh, distinct regions. Um, um, the total area of the Indus Basin, uh, um, the total area of the Indus Basin is 1.12 million square kilometer. Um, out of this, Pakistan shares or contributes 47% of the geographical area. India contributes 39%, China 8%, and Afghanistan is uh, estimate uh, is uh, has been calculated to be contributing 6% um, to the uh, drainage area of the Indus Basin. <clears throat> As I shortly spoke earlier, why we choose these two distinct regions, the Lower Bari Duab Canal in Punjab and, and the Kabul River Basin, uh, because of the clear and, and distinct differences in the geomorphology of these areas. Elevation Kabul up there at the peaks where we receive maximum precipitation is around uh, from six to 7,000 meter above sea level. Uh, similarly, uh, while downstream Peshawar, for example, is in the range of 400 and, and goes down uh, further to uh, the Punjab area. Similarly, the uh, uh, cropping pattern is completely different in Kabul River Basin, especially in, in Kabul, Parwan, Panchari, and those areas where the snowfall is being received. Um, there is a, a clear difference in crop, uh, cropping pattern with downstream areas. Um, those areas, they uh, because of the uh, um, least growing degree days, um, they grow one crop per year normally, uh, because um, till end of February or March, mid-March, there stays the snowfall or the 
the soil profile is mostly frozen, so nothing grows in general. Um, I'm speaking about the crops and vegetables. Well, downstream, uh, you can earlier, uh, in, in early February, you can start uh, growing. So um, there are um, cr there is crop rotation normally in the downstream or the lower body drop canal area. So the similar, the irrigation infrastructure during <clears throat> last four to or decades of war and, and, and you know, political disturbances, um, lots of the irrigation infrastructure in Afghanistan has been damaged. While in downstream areas, in the lower Bari Doab Canal area, it's one of the um, developed irrigation uh, infrastructure in the region, perhaps. So that's why this was another motivation behind selecting these two uh, distinct regions. The sources of precipitation, as I said earlier, is, is uh, different. Afghanistan or Kabul River Basin receives most of its precipitation in the form of snowfall, while downstream receives most of its precipitation in the form of rainfall. The consumption priorities um, uh, do differ largely in Afghanistan or Kabul River Basin. Uh, groundwater withdrawal is uh, mainly uh, withdrawn. Uh, this is the behavior mostly in, in uh, Peshawar also, Jalalabad and um, upstream. Uh, it's mainly used for drinking water purpose, uh, be it a uh, public project or be it a privately owned uh, groundwater well. So the consumption is mainly uh, for a groundwater consumption, uh, groundwater. Uh, while in downstream region, the groundwater is not only used for uh, drinking water, but it's largely used for irrigation purpose too. Um, also, the industrial part on, in Punjab is is quite dominant, and it's uh, they also depend on groundwater withdrawal for their uh, industrial uh, requirements. Okay, uh, the meteorological framework, I briefly speak about the uh, basic uh, um, item that, uh, data sets and items that we have been using. We use the GRAY satellite, the gravity recovery uh, satellite, of, uh, which is a joint mission of the German government and uh, NASA with a special resolution of one degree. The, the temporal resolution is uh, uh, one month, so monthly data is available. Uh, so from the GRACE data set, we, we um, retrieve the terrestrial water storage anomalies. And um, maybe some of you already know that the anomalies uh, um, uh, embedded within the GRACE data set is, um, uh, has been calculated according to the uh, averages from 2004 to 2009. We also uh, we use this key equation of the groundwater to, uh, to, to rearrange this key equation in order to um, yeah, retrieve the uh, groundwater storage anomalies. And there is a combination of um, um, the terrestrial water storage, the combination of, is of different compartments. And these compartments include the groundwater storage, uh, the soil moisture, uh, snow water equivalent, uh, surface water storage, and, and some other factors. So um, uh, these compartments were uh, um, um, knocked out to, or uh, subtracted from the terrestrial water storage in order to get uh, in order to get the groundwater storage anomalies. Okay, and and for in uh, since as I said, it's um, it's like in a block of of water uh, that the terrestrial water storage we we get from the GRASS data sets. Therefore, we used another data sets um, from the Global Land Data Assimilation System, the NOAA 025 product, which is again monthly uh, um, time temporal resolution is and monthly. Uh, basis in special resolution is 0.25 degree. So we use the GLDAS data sets of this known product in order to identify those uh, other compartments and subtract it from the terrestrial water storage anomalies which we received from the GRASS uh, data sets. So we, um, since the resolution is quite coarse, this is one of the, the things that largely criticized for, um, for the um, analysis coming from uh, GRACE. Therefore, we use the NC2 measurements also to validate how how closely it represent it represents the uh, ground conditions. Um, for this purpose, we we use the groundwater fluctuation data from both the areas, um, Lower Bari Doab Canal in Punjab and in the Kabul River Basin. Normally, in Kabul, um, the data has been an issue. The data scarcity is one of the key issue that we cannot get it. But whatever was available, I will tell you later. Um, we use certain periods to do this, and also from Punjab, we, we did the same groundwater measurements uh, to check it against the um, groundwater storage anomalies retrieved from the uh, GRACE data sets. 
the study period that we considered was based on the data availability was April 2002 to June 2007. Okay. Um, As said earlier, the, the terrestrial water storage anomaly has been calculated relative to 2004-2009, as this is the baseline has been considered. And um, um, the hydrological component that accumulates various compartments and components of the water cycle. The equations you see, the equation you see here, uh, the TWSA is the uh, terrestrial water storage anomaly, uh, the groundwater storage anomaly, and then uh, uh, so, uh, snow water equivalent, uh, soil moisture, and surface water storage anomalies. They were the compartments that we used to uh, derive uh, then the uh, groundwater storage anomalies from the entire block. Um, I will uh, come to the results maybe. Okay. Um, here you see that the uh, groundwater variation is a comparative analysis from April 2002 to two, uh, 2017, April 2017. In millimeter, if you look at these uh, these graphs, um, the situation is different. There is, uh, again, uh, the, m m please keep in mind that the anomalies have been calculated based on the be uh, baseline period, which is 2004 to 2009. So this says that both in LBDC and the KRB or the Kabul River Basin, there is, um, the conditions are better. So from the average conditions, there has been a surplus um, uh, are, are a high amount of groundwater that was recharged or not withdrawn and so many terms you can use for this. So it's it's fine, the behavior looks same until 2006. From April 2006 onwards, there is a sharp decline starting <coughs> at both the uh, conditions. Kabul River Basin is rather fine in, in April 2006, but um, the decline starts with the lower body go up canal area. So this could be attributed to maybe uh, some sort of interventions uh, uh, in Punjab. Maybe it could be the strategic reasons for the by the irrigation department or the farmers there that they were uh, installing perhaps pumps and uh, withdrawing more water. I don't see any industrial revolution at this time um, that could be attributed to this decline, but certainly overuse of groundwater compared to the recharge. Um, Kabul River Basin looks fine, as I said, but then uh, somewhere from August 2007, almost a year later, Kabul River Basin also experienced the same pattern. So the um, the uh, decrease in increase in groundwater storage um, uh, is being experienced at both the levels. But then um, in August, to, uh, from April 2010 till August 2010, there is a dead decline. Um, a maximum decline in the groundwater storage um, in the uh, lower body to up canal area. But while Kabul River Basin is, uh, uh, has reversed this thing because then the, um, it goes base, back to the average conditions in August 2010 in Kabul River Basin, but the very contra conditions you can see here in the case of lower body to up canal area. Similarly, if you go on uh, looking at this graph, um, April 2013 then, Kabul River Basin experiences the decline while the uh, um, lower body to up ca canal area improves. The groundwater storage improves there. So one other reason here might be um, that the lower body to up canal area are the downstream, they receive the uh, monsoon showers, while Kabul River Basin, especially the upstream region, is deprived from this naturally. So the only thing, uh, the only storage which could be um, contributed by is the uh, snow melt and and that's all. So 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 the conditions uh, uh, differ here completely. Um, at, at the Caribbean, there is a sharp decline in 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 the LBDC. There is an increase. Um, then, if you look at the April 2017, there is a dead decline up more than 200 millimeter beyond the average uh, compared to the average level. So. This is overall the study period uh, pattern of the groundwater storage changes in both the areas on a comparative basis. Um, similarly, if you look at uh, this graph, um, okay, if you look at this graph, this is the annual uh, variation of the groundwater storage anomaly uh, in, in, in the Caribbean LBDC on annual time steps. 
So the average annual conditions, if you look here the, at the body, lower body Doab canal area, the decline is quite sharp uh, in, in 2016. And this is even wider than in 2000, from 2016 onwards. Um, the, the, um, the shift is quite rapid here in this case. Um, this could be attributed to the precipitation changes. This could be attributed to maybe less dependency. But I don't see any other reason other than precipitation that might have contributed to this because uh, no, no policy intervention could change uh, the situation so uh, abruptly. Um, uh, while in Kabul River basins, uh, you see it follows almost the same pattern, but not with that loss as, as the uh, lower body to up canal area. And the, because the, re the reason might be uh, the, the Punjab's dependency on groundwater withdrawal, which is really extensive and it's increasing from time to time. And if you look at this graph from 2006 onwards, um, for for uh, uh, lower body to up Kenya, the situation changed from 2006 onwards, and for the Kabul River Basin, then the decline starts from uh, mid 2007 uh, onwards, and then refills again the capacity, the groundwater uh, uh, storage capacity, and, and then comes up, and so and so. So this is the general behavior, and then um, if you look at this graph. Here we, we want to show <clears throat> we wanted to show the inter intra seasonal evaluation of the groundwater storage anomaly in the Indus Basin. And um, the upper graph here um, is is of the Kharif season, which is normally called in Afghanistan. We don't use the Kharif in Rabi terminologies, but it's uh, largely you can see in, in, in literature in, in the in, uh, in the Indus Basin. So the Kharif season covers a period from April to September, and if you look here, April to September, the um, Decline in groundwater storage is largely visible in the lower body to up canal area, in Punjab area. And this is certainly one of the regions that supplies food to rest of Pakistan plus exports to Afghanistan and maybe some other neighboring countries, especially wheat production and, and rice production comes from mostly in these regions. So this is one reason. And this is how the, uh, the water transpiration is higher in these months. The demand for water, um, the crop water demand is also higher. So that's the thing which could be consumed, that, uh, which can be um, um, reason for over exploitation of the um, groundwater storage um, for irrigation purpose. But conversely, if you look at the um, um, uh, graph number B from October to March, uh, then uh, Kabul River Basin is slightly performing uh, ex uh, excessive uh, withdrawal, experiencing excessive withdrawal. In, as I said earlier shortly, that Kabul River Basins, there is a very minor fractional percentage of groundwater being used, um, although it's not there are no exact digits, but uh, um, from the visual um, observation, uh, there is the least amount of water uh, being withdrawn for uh, agriculture purpose compared to the LBDC. Um, the entire water withdrawal in Afghanistan from groundwater uh, in, in Kabul River Basin mostly comes for comes for uh, municipal uh, consumption, which is drinking. And al although the quality has been deteriorated largely because of so many other reasons, which is not the scope of this study, but the the groundwater storage was largely exploited in and in, in from October to March, especially in uh, in the Kabul River Basin. And this is really two different contrast. Um, certainly, the irrigation is the key role player in, in this case. Um, yeah. Um, if you look at this graph, <coughs> then uh, on one side, when we analyze the uh, when we analyze the um, uh, the behavior of groundwater storage for the two different seasons uh, here, then here you look at the um, the the comparative analysis of the groundwater storage anomalies retrieved from race and those uh, what we measured uh, from the field, like the, the observation levels or the piezometers. So the piezometric data says, uh, if you look at the behavior here, it's almost the same, although uh, piezometer data is point-based and, and the grace data is especially averaged over a large area, but still the performance is almost the same both the piezometer data and the grace retrieve data. But when you look at the comparative analysis, there's a 46 percent uh, correlation between the piezometric data and, and the groundwater storage uh, anomalies retrieved from the um, 
retrieved from the uh, GRACE data sets. This is discussable um, still, so I, I, I leave it open for, for, further, for later. But then this was the correlation with the lower body to our canal area, but it's slightly different in Kabul River Basin. The behavior is the same for some years, and then um, there is a mismatch uh, from 2010 till 2013 between the piezometric data we retrieved from the uh, ground observations and the GRACE data sets. The correlation here, the correlation coefficient in this case in Kabul River Basin was 32% or 0.32, which is much less uh, compared to uh, the lower body to up canal. Yeah. Again, it's discussable, so I leave it for later. Um, here, um, <clears throat> as in our regions, uh, we know this uh, from the Indus Basin, that the, um, there is a great relationship between precipitation and groundwater storage. Um, if you look at the, the graph here, the response at the LBDC is rather quicker. So there is the rainfall, and then you see the um, increase in groundwater storage. Um, and then the graph falls uh, uh, once again, the, uh, the, since the uh, precipitation stops, which is usually end of August or sometime mid-September, then the storage is already there, but then the consumption or the withdrawal starts and the recharge is minimal in that case. Um, it goes on, it, it, it follows the same pattern what you, what you saw already in the previous graphs. Here in the, in the KRV graph, um, the uh, lag time response is rather longer compared to LBDC, but still, if you look at the, it's, there's a visual um, um, acceptance between the the rainfall and the groundwater storage that is repelled by the uh, precipitation. Um, as I said, the precipitation here is, is received mostly in the form of snowfall, but while in the LBDC, it's mostly rainfall that contributes to the uh, groundwater uh, storage. Um, okay. Um, if you look at this graph, um, Okay, this is the lower body to up canal area, and this is the Kabul River Basin area. So there's a, a monthly, uh, mean monthly uh, relation, relationship between the pre mean, mean precipitation and the groundwater storage. Um, you see here um, in the LBDC, the uh, groundwater storage anomalies, uh, it becomes at the dead level in June. So this is the June, this is the time period from here, this point onwards, um, it starts the monsoon season, and step by step, the contribution of precipitation becomes visible while the groundwater storage is uh, um, filled up again uh, until the end of October, and then the behavior is reversed once again from October onwards. And, and uh, this is the precipitation, the maximum precipitation we experience in the uh, monsoon region or the Punjab area in, uh, is July. Um, uh, July and August, while in Afghanistan, the Kabul River Basin, the maximum precipitation starts from um, November, December, and the highest is in the month of March, which is, uh, as I said repeatedly, is the um, uh, snowfall. And the time uh, leg response of groundwater to precipitation in the lower Baridwab Canal area is uh, three months. And certainly, um, there are different things which plays a role in this case. Um, but the um, um, depth of um, groundwater with respect to the sea level is much, much less than uh, compared to KRB, which is around 6,000 to 6, 7,000 meter above sea level, while this is around um, 350 to 400 um, meter above sea level. And, and uh, for Kabul River Basin, the time lag response of groundwater we, we, we estimated was four months. So the response of groundwater was rather uh, slower compared to the LBDC. So this might be uh, one of the reasons uh, that Afghanistan part is more rocky, um, calci soils, uh, so the, um, uh, the in, in, in very rough words, the distance between groundwater, the depth of groundwater, to the soil surface where the precipitation is being received on is much uh, larger or higher than in LBDC. So the time to reach the groundwater is, is uh, 
um, is making this relationship weaker between the piezometric data and, and, and the GRACE data, because the GRACE data is largely spatially average and the piezometric data is mostly point based. So that's the reason that there is a mismatch which we saw is uh, R square was 0 0.32, while in the case of LBDC, it was um, uh, 0 0.46. <coughs> Um, I will come to the conclusions uh, in order to meet my uh, time slot. Um, during 2002-2017, the KRB in LBDC experienced a mean annual decline of 30 in 30.1 uh, and 30.4 centimeter respectively. Um, we will discuss this maybe if there was a question. Um, during this period, uh, the KRB uh, received um, a total reduction of uh, 4.8 meter. Uh, in groundward storage, while the LBDC uh, was not different, almost they also the LBDC also experienced a, um, a decline or reduction of 4.87 or um, almost uh, five meter uh, in total. Um, based on the results of our analysis, there is a decreasing trend in the. I did not put those graphs because of the shortage of time, but there is a decreasing trend in the groundward storage anomalies uh, at both the sides. And if it um, stays the way it is, it will have dire consequences for the municipal water sector in the Caribbean integrated agriculture in the LBDC. As I said, um, um, mostly um, Peshawar, its suburbs, and then up uh, to Afghanistan uh, areas, uh, there is a 100% dependency on groundwater uh, withdrawal for irrigation, uh, drinking water purpose. Maybe the irrigation part is much less here compared to Punjab, but this, for, for these regions, <coughs> groundwater is vital because we, we cannot uh, live without, uh, without drinking water, although irrigation uh, could be uh, compromised maybe through different strategies, could be through deficit irrigations, could be through uh, change in cropping pattern, could be through different strategic uh, behaviors of the government and the farmers also and could be other uh, other priorities, but we cannot compromise is the drinking water. And that's why for the regions um, uh, mostly who are mountainous, like as I said, Peshawar uh, and, and up uh, to the um, Kabul regions, these uh, areas might experience um, heavy losses uh, uh, because of the decline in groundwater table um, in the years ahead. Um, also the, dec the decreasing trend the decreasing thing from the, the study period during the study period highlights that there is insufficient attention to uh, stakeholders and governing bodies um, to the sustainability of the groundwater resources, its management and future planning initiatives. If you if you look at general uh, this this the public behavior, the, the the people's behavior normally, you see along the roadside maybe there are a number of uh, uh, groundwater uh, extraction points which are commercially used by people without uh, having been obliged to pay care to the sustainability of the species. So, so for a few hundred rupees, for example, they would uh, use it for uh, car washing, but the loss they are making to the, um, the loss that they are making to this, uh, this uh, uh, groundwater pool is, is simply uh, not recoverable in, 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 in short times. The other thing is the, um, uh, no, no master planning, no, no, or no proper urban planning. Everybody who gets enough money um, starts a housing, and then the concretion starts. And then uh, certainly there is a less place, um, less chances for groundwater to percolate and infiltrate to the groundwater table. This is another reason. And um, beside this is the deforestation, for example. So the canopy interception that comes brings water down to the root zone and then infiltrates down joining the groundwater. The deforestation um, causes also um, surface water to st um, stay less on the soil surface and having it, giving it less time to, um, to contribute to the groundwater. So, so many other reasons uh, are there, uh, which can be um, attributed to the loss of this precious resource. Um, for regions like KRB, there is no, no, no immediate alternative to groundwater. I don't say only KRB, as I said, it was Peshawar also, um, the, the tribal belt in, in these regions, the, the drinking water mainly comes from groundwater. And the current decreasing trend might be uh, disastrous uh, for these regions. These uh, the shallow water wells, and we have experienced maybe um, 
especially in the area, I, I'm, I'm sure it's the same in Charsada, uh, Peshawar and so on, the shallow waters, uh, they are gone almost. So every year the farmers or the um, house owners, they have to dig it deeper and deeper in order to um, get water for their families. Uh, otherwise, it's difficult to survive with commercial water consumption and purchase it from the market because everybody cannot afford having the current crisis in, in these countries. Um, it is really disastrous. Uh, and, and we have to, to worry about seriously. This all from my side. Um, I would be happy if there's any comment or um, the photo you see is from Kabul. It's the snow which I was speaking about. This is what it melts and then contributes to groundwater and comes down to Peshawar region for agriculture and also replenishing the groundwater resources. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for a nice talk. Now, the floor is open for questions. Uh, we will take a few quick questions. We have a question from Muhammad Zishan Ali. It's uh, unmuted. Uh, thank you. Thank you, doctor, for the nice presentation. Uh, I have several questions because uh, I'm also working on this field. Uh, currently, I'm uh, sorry for the introduction. I'm, I'm Muhammad Zishan Ali, uh, currently working as a research fellow in International Islamic University. Uh, we are also using the GRACE data. Uh, we are focusing on the Bari Church and uh, Rajna Dwab area. Uh, we want to know about the uh, uh, grace utilization of, uh, for the uh, groundwater storage anomalies and also uh, want to validate further. Uh, but the problems we are facing right now is uh, regarding the uh, the correlation like you have shown in your case study as well, like uh, it's uh, 0 0.46 or 0 0.32. Uh, my question regarding your presentation uh, is that uh, as we have the uh, resample data of uh, up to 0 0.25 degree, uh, but you have currently used uh, one degree uh, because uh, if we go toward the validation, so after the uh, for the validation, if we have a one by one degree of the area, that that is not uh, possible at current time that we can validate with the single point. Uh, there are two ways. Uh, I would like to know about uh, your uh, process for that. Uh, that which way you have used because uh, one way is that if we have a one by one degree area so how we can validate that on the basis of that big area average and secondly either you have used a multiple uh, points observation data as an average and then you have correlated with the grace data thank you okay thank you very much uh, mr zishan um <clears throat> yeah um it's a very good point that you raised um um, I, as I said in my my uh, presentation, we use the one degree data uh, because <clears throat> it's a joint. As I said, it's Grace is a joint mission with NASA by the Bonn University, and and uh, here um, uh, professor uh, who with whom I who was my PhD supervisor, he is the actually the team member with from the German side uh, who is working on Grace satellite, and they have been recommending one degree uh, for its accuracy rather. Again, you, you are right that it's um, it's a very coarse resolution to compare it to a, uh, a point-based data. But in this case here, um, in order to improve the accuracy of GRACE, it, it's advisable to uh, downscale it against um, um, NDVI, for example, against refractive of transpiration, against precipitation, and so many other uh, um, uh, um, parameters. So that's more advisable right now. In our case, since we didn't have any more data, there were no options for us. So we wanted to show how, how the behavior of grace is in two different regions. As I said, the lower Bari Doab Canal area and Kabul River Basin, for example. There is a very, um, um, the elevation difference, for example, a high elevation difference between two regions, completely different cropping patterns, completely different consumption behaviors. Um, completely different agricultural ecology um, and, and precipitation patterns were also different. So that's why we used it. And um, we, what we did was we, we randomly selected few points, which uh, some points which occurred, let's say, in lower Bari Duab Canal area. So we, we just randomly took a point for which the data was available. Again, the data question is important because, you know, uh, we are suffering from data scarcity in many ways, and especially Afghanistan side. Um, 
um, there is much uh, there's a high depth of uh, technical data in, in hydrology. Um, so we we said we we, say we uh, selected once uh, randomly one point from LBDC and one point from um, uh, the Cover River Basin, and we looked at the specially average one degree point based data because it's uh, it was resampled um, the the zero point two five one degree grass data set was resampled two point two five. Um, it it does not increase normally the accuracy because it's the same thing which is split between in different pieces. But it would have increased the accuracy of this if we would have compared it, uh, if we have compared the piezometric data with the downscale data. And as I um, as I said, this downscaling has to have been performed with other parameters, which were um, really an issue for us to do it here. And it was not that's the scope of this um, paper to do the downscaling. It's another project that might be done later. Um, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I hope we will be connected for the further discussion after the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a question from one of our organizers, Bob. And you can ask your question, please. Yes, uh, Dr. Fazura, thank you very much for your presentation. Very interesting. And I, I'm, my question is uh, about the spatial characteristics of the GRACE data. And I'm curious to know, I understand you selected uh, using a randomizing process the pixels that you've compared, but have you also uh, looked at map presentations? In other words, uh, area, uh, larger areas, and can you see the same or similar patterns in a map view that you're seeing from your point view? Thank you. Um, thank you both for your question. Um, um, <clears throat> From the map view uh, in, in the Kabul River Basin, it was uh, um, because the Kabul River Basin uh, there were very limited pixels that uh, could that could come in this area. Again, as I said in my previous uh, answer to our colleague Zishan, um, would it have been better if you would have downscaled it, for example, in order to see a better correlation between the point-based data, which was not visible, uh, really visible in this case, uh, while using the one-degree resolution. Um, um, again, the uh, another uh, problem, uh, I don't know whether to call it problem or not, but um, uh, one of the things that uh, was, well, it could be reason for the poor performance of GRACE in, uh, in to these two distinct regions was mm -hmm. also um, that the point-based data was exactly from that certain time. And the GRACE data, there was a lag time, uh, time lag response of four months in Kabul River Basin. So, the point this base data doesn't represent something which comes in in the next four months, for example. So this is one of the key reasons. In the lower body the web canal area, it, the lake time response was uh, of groundwater to precipitation was two to three months. With, and that's, I could reason uh, that the uh, better correlation between the two data sets. Um, but suddenly Kabul is rocky, it's, it's calci soils, um, um, highly sharp, steep uh, elevations, so the, the water doesn't stay longer on the surface to give it a chance, while the point that is from that point, for example. So certainly these two conditions, because of these uh, extreme uh, or higher um, time lag response, it doesn't allow us to really match them uh, both well. So the idea behind this was to be care that we have to be careful while arguing the grass uh, fancy behavior, or I don't know whatever, for regions like Afghanistan, for example, which is highly mountainous. Uh, and then if, we, if you look at the plain regions in Punjab, okay, this um, much better uh, performance of grace because they have more irrigated areas, more plain regions. Um, um, uh, the time lag response of groundwater to precipitation is also uh, less. So uh, point-based data and the grace data, which is still bigger, of course, resolution, they could match closely compared to areas with mountainous regions. Right. Thank you. I, I also, uh, I just to just to follow up, um, it seemed to me, if I understood your data correctly, that there's a general trend downwards, which I think you reported, and it, it would be interesting for me to see some kind of a visual. Again, I'm aiming at a map, uh, a comparison uh, through time, and it might be that you take, you know, an, an average of your early time and an average of your late time, and you make some kind of a difference color. And I'm, I'm 
thinking about images that I've seen from, for example, California, the Central Valley of California, there's been some very striking maps that have been produced using the GRACE data, which recognizing it has a very coarse pixel size, but nonetheless, you can see regional trends in loss of groundwater over the entire state of California. Uh, it makes a very effective uh, public relations tool. And part, of, part of our challenge being to communicate this information to the general public. So again, I, I would encourage you to think about ways in which you could render this into map view. Thank you. Thank you both for the suggestions. I really appreciate this. And uh, you're right. Um, we are currently working on the downscaling <clears throat> of this one degree product. And one of the um, things which we didn't consider in this publication, we didn't show we didn't show the maps. Uh, uh, initially, we had it here, but then some some reviewers they just uh, suggested us to knock it out, and that's why I didn't include it in my presentation also. But suddenly, in our following uh, presentation uh, research output, uh, because we are using the downscale version, then suddenly these maps will come out, and then gives a very um, a visual uh, interpretation of the situation. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a question from uh, the participants, Dr. Hanzeev Jari. Sir, please, you can unmute your mic and ask a question. Uh, Dr. Fazlullah, thank you very much for a very uh, nice presentation. Uh, I will briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dr. Hanzeev Jadun, and I am leading water uh, res resources research a group at International Islamic University. Uh, I have uh, one specific question regarding the estimation of uh, groundwater storage anomalies. So uh, you are uh, calculating it by subtracting it from the uh, total uh, uh, anomalies by, uh, by subtracting the soil moisture anomaly and the surface water anomalies. How confident uh, are you about these anomalies uh, which uh, which you are subtracting from the total uh, water storage. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Hanzeev Jadun. Uh, okay, let me go back. Okay, here. Um, <clears throat> about the confidence, the confidence uh, of using these blocks. Um, is, again, it's uh, remote sensing products. As it's always a question of how we validate these data sets. Uh, to to add to the confidence level um so we, for example there's no uh, direct um way of uh, you, measuring the groundwater storages at a global scale or a mass scale for example so if the, when once the grace was introduced <clears throat> this was partially appreciated and in, in, in is being appreciated for having a global factor of larger areas or maybe bigger river basins for example <clears throat> the, the the subtraction um, that we did was the, uh, the 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 source of these data sets is originally uh, almost the same uh, the GLDAS data for example that we used here in this case and the grace um, the resolution is different of course but one has to play um, in order to make it meaningful I think so the um, for from the entire terrestrial block we um, we we uh, subtracted the soil moisture and snow water equivalent and so on. Um, in these anomalies, um, some people, some some literatures, I, um, I don't know, I always had a question when I receive it for review, for example. Some, here, for example, if we compare, it, these are the anomalies with the reference period of 2004 to 2009. But when, when uh, some literatures, if you go through, maybe, and uh, maybe you have seen it already, um, when they, subtract the GLDAS components in order to retrieve the groundwater storage anomalies, they just subtracted the linear values, which is, according to me, is wrong, because the, here is the, the terrestrial water storage anomaly, which comes from this. These are anomalies, actually, with a reference period of 2004 to 9. So you cannot subtract the linear values from anomalies. So what we did also in this case here was we converted the other compartments also to anomalies in order to bring it to a same level. Um, so there are just the differences. And usually if you go through some literatures on the endless basin, um, I don't know, and there is no argument why they just subtract the linear values from anomalies. So here in this case, as the only source uh, of, of uh, estimating large areas based groundwater storage, 
I would say uh, I appreciate it unless there is any other in, um, innovation comes in in this case. Um, I, I'm, I hope you know, um, maybe you know better than me in this case, but I think it's the only alternative that we could use uh, so far uh, in large areas. Okay, thank you. And uh, as already discussed, uh, yeah, you only compare uh, the uh, piezometric data for only one well, or uh, it was a submission of the, of different uh, wells. Uh, I couldn't get at that. Point. As I said, um, um, the, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, also, in Punjab area, the lower Bari Doab Canal area, we could have choice of uh, some wells. For us, was no problem. It was almost the same for us comparing different values to the same pixel, uh, but in um, um, because the grace what would change with the, with the piezometer data, uh, not the grace because it has a coarse resolution. But in Kabul River Basin, we didn't have more options, so hardly there were few wells, and we just picked one out of it, which the data was consecutive, and we didn't see any gap. So this was the uh, reason we just selected one. Otherwise, we could have gone for two or three. In the lower uh, Baridwab Canela, it was no problem. It was almost the same uh, if we consider other wells. But for Kabul, the data uh, gaps were the, uh, present in the uh, in the groundwater uh, observations. So that's why we just checked the uh, considered the one which is mostly in the residence area, for example, uh, rather plain and not at the heights. Um, arguing going back to the previous argument that the piezometer data <coughs> shows the uh, point-based variations, for example, well, gr gr uh, grace is more uh, specially average, and they withdrawal mostly in Afghanistan and Kabul River Basin, where we considered this observation. Well, this was mostly in the um, from the for domestic consumption. So we thought this could be more representative to cross-check it against the um, uh, I mean the piezometer in the grace data. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, sir, for uh, sparing time for us for such a wonderful um, lecture. Um, I will request all the participants and organizers to open their cameras for a good photo. Sir, can you please stop sharing your screen okay. so that we can... Is it stopped? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay thank you.